friends, welcome to another video. Today I will be doing something new, something different for my channel, but it's something that I really love watching in other artist channels, and it's an art haul. I am getting ready for Inktober 2021. And I'm still figuring out which prompts I'm going to follow and what exactly I'm going to draw. But I definitely want to spice it up a little bit in terms of the supplies that I'm going to be using. So I want to try some mixed media um, illustrations, but also um, acrylics and watercolors. I mean, I've been doing watercolors all the time anyway, but I've never done them for the Inktober. So I also got some books for inspiration just to explore new ideas and see what else I can do. And um, maybe some of it is gonna stick with me for uh, my other illustrations and it's gonna stay in my art. But in any case, I'm excited to experiment a little bit and I'm excited to show you what I've got. So let's start going through all of the supplies and I'm also going to be swatching with you together so you can see exactly what paints I've got and kind of what mood I'm into for the Inktober. So let's jump to it. Okay, so let's start with paper. And actually the first one that I want to show you is something that I got for my son. He's been begging for his own sketchbook that we are actually going to share together. And by share, uh, what he meant was that I would illustrate with an ink, um, animals, flowers, whatever, and then he's gonna color inside of it. And he wanted it to be like a specific sketchbook just for that purpose. And I found a great deal in Hobby Lobby for six by eight sketchbook. Uh, and I believe it's a 70 pound paper. And it comes with a set of five pigment, um, is that ink? It's a water-based pen uh, and water-resistant. Okay, so they're water-based and water-resistant. They come in various sizes and also a brush. And I just thought that we can open this together and try out the pens and see what the paper is really like. Okay. I am not the best at opening, obviously. On. All right. So here are the pens. Here is the sketchbook. Uh, unfortunately, very thin paper. Like you can see my fingers right through the paper. I mean, we can still try, but this just doesn't look like 70 pound paper. This is so much thinner. I usually try the back page um, for all of the swatching. Okay, let's take just a random pen. So the ink doesn't bleed. It's actually quite nice. Um, yeah, it does show through a little bit. Um, but not too much, but it doesn't bleed on it. Like it doesn't feather on the paper. It actually stays quite nice. 
Um, so we'll see. Maybe like for dry media, they'll, they'll be fine. Let's try a brush. Oh, brush is really nice. Very juicy and saturated. Again, it doesn't bleed entirely through, but definitely shows when you turn the page. And out of curiosity, um, let's try Ecoline watercolor markers. Like something with wet medium. Oh, also this one, it shows through a little bit, but it doesn't bleed through too much. All right. Well, we'll see what my son says about it. Um, if he likes the sketchbook or not, and also what media he decides to use. I'll put this together. Okay, next up is another sketchbook from Hobby Lobby. And this one is with handmade paper. By the way, the cover feels really nice. Um, oh, this is glued together. So a handmade paper, acid-free, it doesn't say um, the weight of the paper. And it's six and a half by 9.4 inches. And I was thinking that I can, oh, this doesn't open well. It doesn't, like, it doesn't open flat. I'm, I'm afraid to push it too much. But this one feels really nice. I mean, handmade paper always feels nice, but this one is just beautiful. Look at this pretty deckled edge all the way around. Paper has a little bit of texture, like a cold press paper. And I was hoping to do some ink illustrations in it too for Inktober. And we're just going to swatch on the last page. Just making sure it's the last page, not the front. So one of the other things that I've got for the Inktober is the Pentel ink brush. And this one is a, a pure black. I also had one earlier with a dark gray. Let me zoom in. So definitely very easy to um, ink on. It does show a little bit on the other side, but it doesn't fully bleed through and holds ink really nice. I also am going to swatch some of the watercolors later once I start um, swatching them, but I just wanna try it some of the Ecoline watercolor markers. Doesn't show through as much as the brush pen.
and let's just try this is my other one my favorite uh, pens it has a pointed tip on one side and a brush on the other side and I don't remember the brand it doesn't say here at least not in English um, but this is another one my favorite also very saturated and easy to control So the, as you can see the ink doesn't feather and stays right where you put it also shows through a little bit but I tend to only sketch on one side anyway like I leave the other side of the sketchbook open so for me personally is not that um, the big of a deal if it shows through a little bit but overall really nice sketchbook like I can't even get over this decal edge this is so pretty can't wait to start sketching and another thing was another pad of arch um, watercolor paper and this one is my favorite for watercolor so it's not something new for me but I grabbed this one because I noticed it was in sale because the plastic sleeve was open and I noticed the ones with the closed plastic sleeves they were full price and this one was a discounted price and I just looked at it and it looked absolutely fine like there was no water damage to it or anything so I decided to grab it and this is absolutely beautiful paper I do a lot of painting on it and I paint with my students a lot on this paper so I'm excited to do some watercolor inking on it too okay now on to the next part acrylics I decided to try out something different and I've done acrylics a long time ago I think the last time I did it was in college and since then I moved on to oils and watercolors but I just thought it would be a nice way to either add some mixed media touches to my illustrations or to apply them as a base on the paper and then draw and paint on top of it that's why I've got some of the neutral colors like these two and I'm excited to swatch them together and I'm gonna get out my palette paper pad just to apply some colors on it so the first one is unbleached titanium So I'm using this paint as is, without any watering, and it just has absolutely beautiful buttery texture. Um, really nice. I don't know why I got out so much paper, um, I mean so much paint. Let's just clean my brush, move on to the next one. Oh, let's just try watering it down a little bit for a lighter tone. Very nice, spreads out really nicely. Okay, the next one is titanium white. It's gonna take a little bit this time. I 
and again very nice buttery texture and just if we add a little bit of water I mean it's hard to see white on white but Titanium white has this like pure white color that is not warm and not cold and that is like a standard for a white paint because um, there are different whites. There is like uh, zinc white um, that is a little cooler. Okay, so next one I want to try is a parchment. Um, definitely more pigments that I would like to see in the paint but I'm not really going to be mixing this one with anything I'm just going to try it as it is because when you are mixing paint with other colors and pigments you want to make sure that you don't have that much going on because then it just results in a lot of muddy colors and color combinations that are hard to control so again really nice matte color a little bit um a little bit on the greenish side that is probably hard to see on camera but a very beautiful shade and i'll just water down a little bit Also very nice and very opaque, definitely more opaque than titanium, than, um, what is it, unbleached titanium. Even watered down, it's still very opaque. I think this is going to make a nice ground for sketching on top of it and just adding a tint to my paper. Alright, the next one that I want to try is... raw sienna it is this one this one is definitely more transparent And it's going to be beautiful to preserve some the texture of paper under it. And it has a very beautiful golden shade. Also makes very beautiful orange when it's watered down. Okay, next one I'm gonna try is red oxide. This one is opaque like all of the other colors and it just has beautiful warm like red brick color. Becomes a little more transparent when watered down but still has a lot of pigment and still very opaque okay and last one is paints gray the color that I use a lot 
in oils and in watercolors and I'm just excited to try this one in acrylics. So this one is a little bit transparent. I mean, so very saturated, dark color, but um, definitely shows some of the paper. And let's see, water down. Yeah, very nice bluish black color, just like the paints gray that you would get um, in other mediums. And um, this is also something that can be interesting to use um, as an underpainting and do sketching on top of it. So here are all the acrylics that I've tried so far, just six colors and um, all of them had really nice consistency and really nice beautiful pigments that I'm excited to try in my painting. And actually I decided while I still have my acrylic paints out, I want to try least some of them on the handmade paper. Just to leave a few swatches for future reference to see how the colors look on this paper and how the texture looks. I really like how these two colors are gonna make a nice underpainting ground. So the ones that are more transparent um, definitely show a lot of paper through it, but these two colors are showing up really nicely on this paper. Also, if you do like a second coat, you can still get a more opaque um, coverage from these paints, but even like this, I think it's still very pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna move on to watercolors. Okay, so for watercolor, I wanna use uh, just a little piece of watercolor paper for swatching. And when I was picking out these colors, I kind of had a winter palette in mind to make like a themed, um, little, collection um, and these are the colors that I got these are the colors I haven't tried before so I was really excited but um, just to add to my overall collection of watercolors and to use separately so I'm excited to see how they're gonna look together that's why I want to swatch them on a separate paper and first one is um, Terra Verte Am I saying this right? This is probably hard to see on camera.
Definitely very muted color and really nice. To me, it definitely does have the wintry feel to it. Next one is olive green. This one doesn't really seem that um, wintry, but I feel like it's gonna create a nice contrast. between cooler and warmer greens. I want to create some variation on the paper. Um, variation of pigmentation and the amount of water so that it's just easier to see how the paint behaves in different situations. Okay, so far both very different and um, both just uniquely beautiful in their ways. Like Terra Verte is way more transparent and way more muted and olive green is more saturated pigment. But both are really beautiful. Okay, the next one I want to do is Antwerp Blue. Um, correct me if I'm saying this wrong. But another really beautiful pigment that I wanted to try for a long time. Oops, probably got a little too much. Ooh, very vibrant. Okay, let's do another blue one. Let's try indigo. And I know this is a really beautiful color because I really love this one in my oil paints. Wow, really dark, rich color. And I want to water it down a little bit um, just so I can see how it looks in lighter shade. And I just. It just stays really, really nicely saturated with pigment. And just to compare these two blues. Um, definitely both of them on the cooler side. Maybe Antwerp is a little warmer than this one, but I just like how desaturated, like a little more desaturated this one is and how dark is it. Like it's almost black. Okay, and we have just three more. Let me just move this a little bit. So next one I want to try is Davies Gray. Also my favorite color, one of my favorite colors in oil painting. This one seems to be less saturated with pigment. And a little uh, more opaque. But 
but still very nice tint of grey and just a fun color to try something different my palette okay next I want to try is one dye brown this I've never tried before so I'm excited to see how this pigment behaves and how it looks Ooh, also very nice rich color very nice variation um, in this watercolor like from darkness to the lightness sometimes when you dilute the paint with water it kind of loses um, not just the pigment but loses a little bit of the color itself in there I don't know how to explain it but I just like when it stays really nicely saturated when you water it down and the next one is going to be ultramarine violet. I ooh, oh no. Uh this one was squeezed a little too hard. Uh let's hope we can still save some of it. Maybe I'll just put it into a little empty watercolor pan and put it into my palette so I can preserve some of this paint in there oh wow this one is just so bright I feel like this one's gonna mix nicely with different reds and create nice mixes. Okay, overall, I'm very happy with the new colors. Um, obviously, didn't have any plan when I was putting this palette together, but I'm still. Um, hopeful to make this work and see what kind of illustrations I can come up with and I think like this is more of the landscape palette um, definitely has wintry wipes when I put this all together so excited to try this one put away the paints I want to quickly try them on the handmade paper Maybe if not all, then just at least some of them. And also just to see how the paper behaves with the paint. Oh, indigo just looks so nice. Paper definitely absorbs uh, watercolors very quickly. Like you can see, just absorbing the water right almost like right away. Off 
Okay, this is definitely not watercolor paper. Like, it's hard to mix paints and... Like, I was trying to add just a little bit of green to it and they are not mixing at this point. Like, the paper starts crumbling. It looks nice for just simple washes, but definitely not made for mixing. Just to see the other side. Yeah, this is very thin paper, buckled a little bit. But I will see if I can find a way to make this work. Maybe with some very light washes. Okay, another thing that I got recently um, are these double-ended watercolor brush pan set from Michaels and um, I've already swatched them and I have the swatch card right here just because I got them maybe last week and I just couldn't wait to try them and I like how vibrant these are definitely not that easy to water down after you apply color like just to show you an example i'll take a color just any oh nice thing about it is that it has double tip it has a pointy tip and it has a brush but unfortunately the uh, the markers are not labeled so if you swatch them there are just like no way to write down the colors to know which ones they are exactly because some of the caps don't really match the colors of the markers but these are not like too expensive so i feel like it's a nice set for the price oh actually these look much nicer on watercolor paper like, I sketched with them in my regular sketchbook. And it was not mixing. Like, once you draw with it, it just like, stays put on the paper. Just like regular markers would. But... On the watercolor paper, they are mixing nicely. So, okay, this is, yeah, this is nice. Let's try some brighter color. Okay, I'm taking my words back. These are um, easy to mix when mixed on the watercolor paper. And this is the set. I'm gonna leave the links to everything down below. But the variety of colors is something that got my attention. I was originally thinking about using these just for coloring books like sometimes um as you know guys that i published three of my coloring books and sometimes when i don't feel like drawing something or painting something from scratch i just like to do like warm-up sketching by sketching on my coloring pages and I was thinking that I can use this set on it and I sometimes even print um, let me show you I sometimes print my coloring pages directly on the watercolor paper and this is one of the examples I reduce the, uh, reduce the opacity in the Photoshop to like a light gray color and here is the finished result of one of these. I actually have a video for this one. And 
Maybe I can even try some of these markers on the watercolor paper on these ones because on the regular paper they were not mixing. Okay, the last thing from the art haul that we have left are the books and I'm somebody who can never have enough books. Like I want more right after I finish some of them. And this one I actually got purely by accident at Mar uh, Marshalls. Marshalls, if you know, um, in the US, it's, um, it's like a store that has everything basically, from clothes to home decor, um, and like some of the cosmetics and like like all of the stuff and sometimes in the office supply section they also have books that like use as a coffee table box or display box and this one just got my attention because of the name botanical shakespeare and when i started flipping through this one i just really loved all of the illustrations in it and it just has like different verses that mention some of these flowers from like different literature sources and some of these are like full page illustrations like this one um, They're all watercolor, or at least they look like watercolor illustrations. And sometimes it's just nice to flip through the book just for inspiration like this one. This is a full page, beautiful drawing. I mean, painting. Um, yeah, it's a nice way to just look for inspiration when you feel stuck. Um, um, this one was... Not even expensive. Oh, this one's from HomeGoods. Yeah, it was only $13. I'll see if I can find this on Amazon. Maybe it's gonna be easier to find it there. Okay, next one is a book that I had my eyes on for a really long time. And I finally got this one. This is a watercolor flower painters A to Z. Um, and this one it has like instructional examples in the beginning for like different techniques but once you open the book it is actually not that much of a step-by-step -step book but it does have like all the explanations so you like you have to just read all the instructions before you begin painting and it has the list of all of the colors used and I adore this style like how delicate it is and again, it's something that is just beautiful to use for inspiration. I did um, actually a copy of this one with markers in my sketchbook, just as a warm up exercise. Yeah, this is a great way to use also as inspiration for different techniques, see how other artists approach um, different complicated textures like this artist is working one by one on all of these little flowers if I was if, actually if I was painting I would probably paint the entire flower like yellow and then start going in into the shadows with orange but it's nice to see other people's approach too yeah, so overall, really happy with the book. Really glad that I finally splurged and got it. And it's also a oh, great way to... Where is it? Oh, way, way to see how other artists paint leaves. For me, leaves are always so complicated in watercolors. I feel like I can never get the result that I want and this is something that I'm I'm hoping to try like the layering that this artist has and like variation of different shades of green for the leaves 
so we'll see how this works oh this one yeah this one's also very beautiful all right i'm gonna leave the links to this one too um this one it was purely for fun um i had it in my amazon basket for a long time but when i was in barnes and noble it was actually on sale as you can see it was only ten dollars so i was like why not um, and when I opened it, I actually saw that this is more of a sketchbook. So this is like a collection of prompts for sketching with some examples. And it even has like step-by-step -step drawings. But I'm just hoping to find the yeah, like here. Like it has all the like step-by-step -step examples. And then you have space to try it yourself. And I also tried to sneak in some of the color swatches. Like this is Ecoline watercolor pen uh, markers. And they don't bleed through as much. Like they don't show through at all. So I'm excited to start sketching this one too. This is also a great example. Um, of like inspirational resource something that you can do when you feel stuck with your art just to try different approaches different techniques different subjects um, I'm gonna leave a link to this one and the final one is probably I was most excited about this one and this one is like an encyclopedia about animals but the bonus of it is that all of the illustrations are watercolored. Like how gorgeous are these illustrations? It has all of the facts about all of the animals and it does have photographs on the top, but it is all watercolored. It has beautiful examples of illustrations. And it's just so inspirational to see these detailed, very elaborate illustrations. And I'm excited to work on more animal illustrations for Inktober as well. Like this has fish and insects, like it's a complete encyclopedia. Just gorgeous, gorgeous color. It's just mesmerizing. This is the first time that I've seen a book like this um, that is not an art book. It's encyclopedia, but it has so many paintings in there and there was also a similar book about birds and I'm hoping to get the birds next time after this one so this is it for the art haul thank you so much for joining me today thank you for staying till the end if you did I know this is probably gonna be a very long video but it's something that I like to see in other artists because I like to see colors being used and swatched um, just before I invest into something I want to know if it's something I'm actually gonna like and enjoy so some of these colors and supplies I've already seen other artists using that's what got me excited about trying them too and hopefully my video will um, give you some inspiration to try something new um, doesn't matter if you are getting ready for Inktober or not um, if you are uh, reach out to me on Instagram and let's do this together. I don't know what prom list I'm going to use. I'm hopefully gonna be like switching from one to another depending on what the ideas I get the day, how much time that I have. So let me know if you are gonna be doing Inked Over this year, what supplies you plan to use, what prompts you hoping to follow. Um, if you want to send me links um, to the prompt list or some artist 
that you're gonna be following for um, this Inktober, let me know. I'll be glad to check it out too. Maybe we can do this all together and share all of our results on Instagram. But excited to experiment a little bit more before Inktober starts, just to get like a better feel of all of the new paints that I got and we'll see hopefully this is going to be a great and exciting month for sketching and painting all right thank you so much for being with me today don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button to get all of my new videos in your feed and i will see you again very soon bye bye